Hi, my name is Artie Fahey. I am here in Maine and this is my wood shop. Originally, this whole thing was only 10 foot by 18 foot, but as you can see behind me, we've actually extended it out quite a bit. Well, this is the whole shop. The original shop was actually 10 foot by about 20, 22 feet, but the last few feet were put aside just for storing flat boards, sheet goods, and things that I really don't use very much, leaving the actual shop space at 10 foot by 18 square feet and adding to it this past year a 10 foot by 14 foot uh, addition, bringing the shop total square foot space to 320 square feet. What you may not be able to see from the front or the side of the shop, you can see on the back of the shop where I keep a lot of extra wood in storage. And most of the time what we have here is green wood that we leave out for a year or two. One other especially important aspect of the shop is this space right underneath it. It, it amounts to about 30 inches. And in this 30 inches underneath, I am able to put all of my dust collection and dust extraction machinery, keeping it out of the shop and providing me with more room than I normally have. As you walk into the shop, one of the first things you'll see is my 16 by 32 Supermax drum sander. I know it's, an, uh, it's, a, it's a luxury, but for me at least it works uh, so well and, is, and it is so important because I tend to work on smaller things. This essentially is what we would call a five foot shop. I don't have that much room to make really big things, but the small things need a lot of finessing and this sander right here helps with that a whole lot. Although I've had to make a couple of small sacrifices to do this, I actually have not one, but two bandsaws in the shop. The first one is a Laguna 1412 with a Resaw King blade. Uh, I like buying uh, rough cut wood, letting it dry for a couple years and then cutting it down, especially on smaller projects like boxes because they are generally only about three eight seven inch thick when it comes to their walls. And this saw right here lets me do all of that. All right, just to the left of my uh, Laguna, I have yet another band. So this time a Rikon 623. This one here is outfitted with a Carter stabilizer. I tend to use smaller blades, eight inch and quarter inch blades for more, for more of the uh, scroll type work. Uh, it's been a real find, especially since I was lucky enough to pick it up on a garage sale. One of the things I use on this is a feather board made by Bold Products. And it's a double height. If you purchase the, uh, the certain model, it'll come with a double height and it really helps hold uh, the uh, taller wood in place and keeping it in line uh, much more than a single level feather board would do. As you may recall before, I mentioned that the shop is about 30 inches off of the ground. That lets me keep my dust extraction under the shop where the sawdust actually blows outside and into the woods. As you head into the shop though, you cannot find any uh, dust extraction system at all and very little almost really no noise as you can see it comes up through the floor and in this case it is divided up and split up between the Laguna 1412 going to the left and over to the right and going up the wall you can see an extended hose length uh, with a port on top that reaches easily to any and all of the other power tools that I use on this end of the shop. The shop here actually measures 14 foot across and it's in this area that I built a, uh, a countertop. It runs about 33 inches tall and on top of the countertop I'm running a uh, Harbor Freight 12 inch uh, rotary disc sander. It's been a little tough to find this thing but it's worked out really well as well as the rigid oscillating spin sander. And if you'll notice right in the middle, here again you will see the, uh, the ports coming up from under the floor that let me provide dust collection for both of these. Up above them right here, uh, I keep a lot of my lumber in-house, anything from cherry to bird's eye maple to hard maple to even limba. Now I built this rack right here from an article by John Peters, who's one of my favorite YouTube guys. And if you look just below it, you'll see I have a rolling cart with my Delta 735 planer. And of course that has a helical head. Just under that is just an extra shelf I'll keep things like my dado set in. Uh, to the right, you'll see a few of the Festool pa uh, boxes. I am not that big on Festool, but I buy what's really necessary and what's really unique, and I am glad that I can afford to buy them because they do make some really cool stuff. Along the wall right here, you'll see a small cabinet that I built that was uh, designed 
Uh, not that there was a lot of design involved, but by John Peters here again for the Power Pro wood screws that he uses. I follow John a lot and I really respect what he does. So yeah, sometimes I copy him <laughs> right down to the cabinets that he puts his stuff in. Of course, you do see the Craig uh, pocket hole system right there as well. I try to use every single square inch of space in the shop. I just simply cannot afford not to use it. As we walk around the room, we have, uh, well, <laughs> I'm using here is a, uh, is a Rockler router table, nothing special. I do use the Triton router underneath so I can manually lift and lower it without having to buy any special tools to do that. I also use the, uh, the Rockler dust collection system under, under the uh, router table. You can see little various doodads and jigs hanging along the wall and a special cabinet that I built up here that simply surrounds all these regular Home Depot, Lowe's kind of uh, little bins that hold screws and oddball stuff while letting me store other things right on the front of it. And here again, maximizing space. This is a Bosch 10 inch um, saw and this works really well over here. I'm using, if you look under it, you'll see that I'm using a Festool extractor and the extractor is hooked up to the Bosch and provides extraction not only for this but for my other Festool tools as well. You can see my Festool sander right here. Um, compact space, terrific and it's just a perfect solution for a small shop. <laughs> this is my saw stop one and three quarter inch table saw. I know everybody loves their table saws and I love mine too, but I have to tell you, it's not the only tool in the shop that brings me joy. In this one, I use a narrow kerf blade. It works terrifically. Here again, it's got its own dust collection system vented just for this. We actually use not one or two, but three blowers under the building. And it just keeps the place just about as clean as you could hope. As you may have noticed, I use real wood, rough cut wood for my walls and it lines all of my walls. I get one by 12 rough cut and I simply place it over the wall studs and over some insulation and it lets me recess tools that would normally be hanging out from the wall are basically recessed into the wall. Right above the saw stop, you can see I have a selection of blades and a couple jigs and even a clock and it takes up no space. In a small shop, I find this is ideal and it's it's been a blessing ever since I just kind of came up with this idea earlier on during construction. As we move into the older part of the shop you can see that I've recessed all of these tools here from my drills to some glue into the walls to keep the area as wide visually as possible because it actually measures just under 10 feet wide once you have all the studs and the and everything else installed in the building. Um, Right here is a Harbor Freight workbench. Now, I know it's not it's some kind of a hoity-toity special workbench, but it's for the money, I thought it was great, and I find it really useful. I am a hybrid woodworker. I am not just a hand-tooled kind of a guy, and I certainly I am not just a power tool guy, and this just works great. I've customized it a little bit by adding a, uh, a vise in the front, as well as the original vise that comes on the end of the unit. And if you look down below in the unit, you'll see I have installed a slide out tray that holds my port of cable jigs for, for, uh, for doing dovetails. Now what I have here on the floor right next to the workbench is a junkyard refrigerator. I picked this up from the, uh, from the transfer station and I tore it out of its guts and I got it for free, which is a really good deal. And by removing its guts and installing a 15 watt bulb, I am able to store in the colder months here in Maine, uh, many of my glues and finishes. And while a refrigerator is meant to kept, keep in the cold, in this, case, in this case, let me get that right, in this case, it's actually keeping in the warm. Uh, it has its own little zone right here. So even when the shop gets really cold, this refrigerator actually does a pretty good job of preserving my finishes and my glues. As we head down into the uh, shop a little bit more, the other end of the workbench, you can see where I keep my most precious tools. These are my, uh, my uh, dovetail saws, my routers, and my chisels, all made by Lee Nielsen right here in Maine, as well as my shooting board. Keeping them recessed keeps everything so cool and so great looking, and yet, but yet keeps them very, very handy 
at the same time keeping them out of the out of harm's way. Now, as we walk down a little bit more, you'll see a charging station. Uh, everybody's got to have one of these. The wires are actually tucked behind this panel right here. It can be removed uh, if need be. And this is something, I should turn this on. This is something brand new for me. It's a Nova Viking drill press. I love this thing. It's a full horsepower, does a terrific job. And I like drilling larger holes sometimes and this handles it easily. One of the first tools I ever bought from my shop was this Ryobi vacuum. And this has earned its keep more than any single tool in the shop, no matter what it is. I place it just below my drill press here. And of course, it has wheels and just slides around. It's cordless and it's perfect for keeping the shop clean. On the other short end of my shop is yet another 10 foot wall. Here again, I have all kinds of things crammed into it, but this lately has become the home, the center of my sharpening world. Anything from the work sharp to my, my stones here my, uh, from Rob Cosman. And of course, I'll, here's a little uh, vise from Schoberg that kind of is portable and I can use it all around the shop when I need to. Uh, you'll see just below uh, all of this equipment here are a couple of metal uh, tool storage chests. I normally don't get too many of them, but these are such a good deal. And this is where I keep my carpentry kind of tools because I just simply don't have room for them uh, hanging on some wall someplace. And I do really want to keep this a woodworking shop and not a uh, carpentry uh, kind of a shop instead. One of the things I really like about watching shop videos is that we have a chance to share each other's experiences. In this case, I'd like to share this with all of you. This is a uh, my Rikon lathe that I mentioned earlier. I don't do that much lathe work. I, it'll come and go in spurts. But one thing I use this lathe for, and it's made it really, really a worthwhile investment, is the installation of this sanding bladder. This is actually something I got from Klingspor. And if you take a look at it, it's a cylinder. It's about four inches, and it is inflatable with air to different... Uh, hardness is just like a bicycle tire and once you put a sanding tube on here you can actually if you'll notice squeeze and this makes it perfect for doing rounded objects uh, whether it's small things for the table or spoons or anything like that and it's just not something I've seen a lot of it's a little expensive but I thought it was worth bringing up as I think most of us have, have started with woodworking, the first thing we hear is you can never have enough clamps. Well, I have to admit in this size shop, maybe I have too many clamps. Uh, I went out, saw Bessie's on sale at Home Depot. Uh, it was one of those things where you buy two and you get two, or it was a four pack or whatever. And as you can see, I've loaded this wall here with these uh, F style clamps, in addition to the larger clamps that I keep around the shop. Below it was my first attempt at making a hand tool wall. And it came out really well. I was pleased with it. And uh, here again, th these are additional chisels, a, a, uh, a fret saw, some, some malice that I made, and other things that just work really well being next to this kind of work surface. As I may have mentioned before, I have not one but two workbenches. Both are Harbor Freight and both have been modified. Uh, I've taken the vise off of this one and put it on the earlier one that we had seen in the video. And this one here I've actually built in T-Tracks. And one of my favorite things is the fact that I have not one or two, but three router tables. Uh, one is the larger one discussed earlier in the video. And then they have these smaller Rockler add-on ones that actually work with the T-Track if you happen to uh, locate them properly. Uh, one is set up uh, for a chamfer and one is set up for rounded corners right here. And these are the things I use most. And it's so simple because all I do is keep them handy all the time. I never have to change a router bit. And if I have to do some more serious things, uh, I will go to the larger router table. I've tried to keep this shop tour kind of uh, limited. I haven't opened up all the drawers and explained every little uh, bit and piece I have in this place because sometimes these can go on a little long. Hopefully you've enjoyed sharing this with me. The last part I really have to show you here because this kind of completes the circumference of the shop is this little... Uh, hand plane till that I had made up earlier. It says Grampy's. Now, I have to tell you, when it comes to Grampy's, uh, it's because I have some great, wonderful grandchildren that I was hoping to bring into the, uh, into the hobby. And it's kind of worked to a point, and uh, it was a good thing. So hence the name Grampy's Woodshop. Here again, I basically use uh, Lee Nielsen uh, planes and hand tools, although I do use some Wood River as well. Over here is just uh, one of the very first things I built before we did the addition. 
and it kind of wraps up this part of the shop. Well, as we close out the shop tour, I just wanted to discuss how we keep the place clean, whether it's the floor being kept clean or the air being kept clean. Now, up right up against the ceiling here is a WEN uh, air filter. We have two of these in the shop, one on each end because the shop is, uh, is longer than it is wide. And this does a couple of things. Obviously, it helps clean the air, but it also, in our case, help circulate the heat in the winter, which is a big deal because we don't have any big time source of heat in the shop at this point. Uh, so that's number one. And number two involves this very expensive tool. Uh, and it involves cleaning the shop when it comes to the floor. Now, basically our floor is actually a floor that very much looks like wood, but it is made of plastic. And it's uh, something we got from Lowe's and it was very, very cheap and very, very non-porous. So it's very easy to sweep. And if you see down here, you'll see some shavings and you'll also see basically a hatch down here with a little extra lid over it. And this uh, port right here comes down through the floor and feeds under the building and creates, of course, one heck of a lot of suction. So when it comes to sweeping the floor, all I have to do is essentially use this little on off toggle that I got from Harbor Freight. This will do up to three devices and I use all three of them here. And by hitting the proper button, sweeping is so easy. It's just a matter of going through the motions. And then, as simply as this, shutting it off, putting this back on top, and replacing the upper panel. Oh, my shop is clean. It's as simple as that. It's not an expensive thing. We port under the building. Uh, we don't go into a regular dust collection bag because being in Maine here, not only do I have a wooded property, but we don't have a termite problem here, which is something you might want to consider if you decide to take this approach on your own. So that's it. I uh, appreciate you all stopping by for our 2022 one and only tour because this is going to be it. Uh, I look forward to seeing your shop on YouTube as well. So for Maine, Artie Fahey, have a great day and thanks for stopping by.